Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the opening show of Love by 2023. I'm your host, PS. I hope you, you're having a great uh, evening so far. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you for the next uh, about 60 minutes with uh, some uh, highlights about what's to come on Love Might. I have with me two guests to help me do that. I have uh, Poi on that, 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 that side. That side, that side. Okay, Poi on that side. Uh, Poi has been around in the demo scene since uh, quite a long time. We initially started in the Atari, if I'm not mistaken. I'm probably mistaken. Back in 92. So really long, long scener. And then we have Pestis on the other, other side, uh, which is a relatively new demo scener. He started being more active around 2019. So uh, pandemic age demo scener. So welcome both of you, Poi, Pestis. Pleasure to have you both here. How, you all, uh, how are you both doing? Hope you're doing okay. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice nice so, uh, uh, first question before we start uh, the introduction, of course. So, a quick introduction to to both of them and how are they uh, renowned in in terms of uh, size coding? Where are the authorities in in size coding in particular? So, Poi has been around for uh, many many years since two thousand and uh, nineteen uh, since nineteen ninety two, as I previously mentioned. Was active in the Atari uh, scene, also on the MS DOS, uh, doing graphics, uh, starting to learn some code, but he more got into uh, uh, size coding on JavaScript, and he's been known for doing a lot of uh, early JavaScript uh, size coding things uh, using Favicon, not using Favicon, the beginnings of the Canvas element. Uh, so he's been around for uh, many time doing a lot of uh, interesting size coding things. Most of the size coding things you did for JavaScript don't even work on modern browsers anymore. That's how much the the spec already changed. <laughs> Uh, throughout the years is this is this an accurate uh, assessment poi is there anything you would like to to add to this roll of credits oh. <laughs> uh, thanks uh, yeah well for for science coding in gas it, it's uh yeah, the browsers evolves like the, the security models of the browsers evolve so it, it things are yeah things change like some things we we could do well oh, but we're allowed uh, not allowed anymore uh, like for instance now in uh for the demo scene intros, uh, to have sound, you need uh, user needs to click on something, and before that was not needed. So it's a uh, yeah, all the old intros don't work anymore because of it. And you also did some intro coding for MS DOS, didn't you? Some size coding yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did some um, yeah, a couple of four uh, Ks uh, and down to sixty four bytes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, even thirty two bytes. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Pestis, as I mentioned, relatively new senior, started getting a bit more active around 2019. It was famous for doing this MATLAB demo using the OpenGL capabilities of MATLAB at the time. Actually, a 4K intro. And then I somehow managed to convince him to do an intro for Tick 80. And uh, he's been on a downward spiral ever since. <laughs> Pestis, <laughs> is this an accurate assessment? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. I'm pretty deep in the Tick 80 thing with Pocket Tick and everything now. But yeah, I, I actually started uh, also in the 90s doing a lot of the DOS stuff, DOS demos. And I, I think I at some point did even a 64K at that time. But then it sort of died out for 20, 20 something years. And, uh, but, but I never did a 4K intro. And that was always like something like, ah, it would be so cool to be able to do all that. And, but then I started like getting back into the, back into the, uh, you know, having a little bit more time available. And uh, first the 4K stuff, but then very quickly. And actually, this is because of you. You challenged me to do something with DK to 256 bytes. And that's how the really the tiny intro stuff got started. Okay, uh, so I guess we kind of already answered the next question, which was how did you get involved into size coding specifically? Uh, may maybe, Paul, you didn't answer this very well. Why size coding in particular? What attracted you to size coding? Yeah, um, so I, I, I was a bit active on the Atari uh, for a while. And when I moved to PC um, in the mid 90s, we started to spread our things. And the way at the time to spread your release was through BBS. And there was all this BBS intro, so it was typically pretty small because <laughs> you were paying pretty much per kilobyte uh, to download stuff. Uh, so the intros to advertise with BBS uh, were between one and four kilobytes. And, and I found them really, really cool. So I just yeah, got curious and made a few myself. And then I just got hooked. 
and it's really yeah, really cool challenge it's absolutely cool you know it's just a few bytes are you still in touch with the bbs scene because they're still like using telnet there's still a lot of people using uh, bbs it's not as big as it used to be before the internet blew up but uh, are you still in touch with that in any way no 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 okay that's a no. shame um okay uh, does anyone have any recommendations for newcomers uh getting into the demo scene getting into size coding what would be the best place to start i i actually wrote a small article on that so teaching uh, demos teaching the demo scene in 14 days so that's a good link that i recommend people to start with what about you when someone asks you about the demo scene uh, what's your go-to answer for that i, I guess poi you first um for people who don't know the demo scene, like first I should... The yeah, demo scene and size coding. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for size coding, I think uh, Love Byte and Tiny Code Christmas was excellent. Like uh, these 12 days, like explaining what is size coding, a couple of challenges of increasing difficulty, was really cool. Uh, but if, if anyone asks me uh, today, I will, I will send them to uh, Tiny Code Christmas. And the new talent competition that came after was a really good idea. Yeah, and it had some pretty good uh, releases as well. I remember you used to give some workshops as well, how to do some uh, JavaScript uh, stuff, like from scratch on random conferences about JavaScript. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, so I'm a JavaScript developer uh, by day, and I, I speak at conferences. And being a demo scene, of course, I end up doing some live coding. Uh, at conferences where I do, yeah, basically demo scene effects uh, in 20 minutes uh, in front of videos. And it, I don't know, it's pretty fun to do. It's, it's a bit like a bike bike course uh, without the size constraints. It's just that you have, yeah, see the time constraint. Uh, and people are usually, it's not a demo scene audience, it's more like a general web developer audience. And they're super interested. Uh, they are really like, every time I do it, there's people coming after to talk to me and say, like, how do I do this? I want to do it. And uh, like, oh, it's telling me that we have this idea of, yeah, I want to do this animation. How would you do it? And I give a few, yeah, a few advice how oh, I would tackle this. Um, and some of them I, I send them to uh, Demozu or who I talk. <laughs> yeah, or almost, uh, yeah, brave. <laughs> Okay, uh, Pastis, what about you? What do you what do you say to newcomers to demo scene and I, I uh, think size that coding? The... I think that the uh, uh, fan, uh, Tiny Code Christmas were already mentioned, but in general, I think fantasy consoles are now probably the easiest way to get into demo scene and size coding both, because they are a fixed platform and all the they are very well picked apart by now. So, so we know all the tricks. There's a lot of tools and there's huge amount of documentation uh, on the internet already, and. Uh, I should add that the the size coding Discord has been extremely helpful, at least for me. Like that was like the mind mind opening thing that I just go there and ask all these people, how do I do this and how do I that, and I, I usually get an answer in in less than a, a few minutes. Uh, so that that has been a, like super helpful for me at least. To get and the, the, and the, the, the interesting part. thing about the size coding Discord is also that you have multiple platforms there. So, like, if you're just vaguely interested in learning x86 assembler, you know, there's a channel there and people talking about it there. And if you just do, you know, other kinds of assembler or just fantasy console, you also have a spot there. It's very interesting to see like the different dynamics of the different uh, platforms and how different it is. So, yeah, really good, good resource. Um, how do you deal with people knowing your work? Do you feel pressured to meet their expectations? How, how do you deal with that? Boy. Do people know my work? How? <laughs> <laughs> well, when people on. know your work and they talk about that, uh, how do you feel about, do you, do you feel like uh, there's a pressure to meet the same level of quality as your previous productions? Or do you just, you know, do something uh, when you have some free time and don't care about that? Um... I don't feel pressure from others, but I don't, yeah. Myself, I don't want to do the same, like, same thing again and again. Uh, I was, in every part I do, I try to do something a little bit more different, explore a little new thing. So I think I'm like, I'm pressuring myself. I don't feel pressure from others. 
What about, for example, the assembly? You won the 1K assembly for a few times. The people expected you to you do the other another 1K JavaScript killer production. Um, yeah, maybe. Well, well, it's, it's, I think it's me actually. I'm like, yeah. Like I, I got second place uh, uh, this year, and I'm like, damn it! What did I do? <laughs> I have to. Like yeah, yeah. I, since I am, um, I was yeah, lucky enough to to be in assembly uh, once. I'm like, oh, I have to repeat that. That was so cool. So I'm um, yeah. I put the, the pressure on myself. Okay, uh, Pastis, what about you? Yeah, I was thinking, do I feel pressure from the peers watching these intros? And I realized that not as much as, as from the organizers of the compost. I always feel my obligation is towards the organizers of the compost to, you know, support support the compo and, and submit good good stuff to that compo. So I really want the compo to be good and the organizers to be rewarded for all their hard work uh, for, for doing the organizing by submitting something worthwhile. But but not, not as much from the peers. I, I really... I really also want to, you know, uh, kind of like, I also have this kind of problem that when I start, when I start getting good at something and then I realize that now I want to learn something completely different and then I sort of a go com completely different direction. So, so you, you won't see what you expect from me, for example, from the, in this love bite. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Interesting. So not a killer 512 bytes intro then? No, no. <laughs> okay. I, I'm very curious about that. Um, another question that I've lined up for you. How do you feel about the adjacent scenes to, to size coding and coding, creative coding in general? Stuff like processing, uh, doing stuff like that fits into Twitter, uh, tiny art scenes that are like not really demo scene, but they're kind of related to the demo scene. Uh, can we explore them a bit better in terms of outreach? Uh, have you done that in the past? Do you have any tips or thoughts about that uh, point? Uh, I love all these like side scenes, uh, like uh, Twitter is one of them. It's, they do amazing things on uh, Twitter.net. Um, there's a Japanese G uh, GLSL, yeah, the GLSL hashtag. That's really cool. Uh, under a tweet GL. Uh, T W I G L uh, hashtag also on Twitter and Instagram. We are amazing production there, and that typically fits in the tweet. Um, then the, my Twitter feed is like full of misspins plus illustrators and size coders. And I I've, yeah, I find it super super inspiring. And yeah, many of them do already solve size coding. So maybe we should. Yeah, have some proposals to them. Yeah, it's the hard thing is how, you know, they do creative stuff and it's very interesting and we go there and comment and we show them some of our stuff. But how do we, you know, make them demo sceners, you know, active in the demo scene? That's the real challenge. And how do we cross pollinate these different uh, things? Yeah. Yeah, we're probably opening some competitions to like things like three GL would be like one would like love them in and then we would get curious about your own stuff, your own compose. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Maybe we try more of that. May, uh, like, yeah, Twitch GL is like a, a web page with, it's, it's like a shade of toy, basically, uh, but super minified uh, with a bunch of um, uh, utilities to get noise functions and so on. So maybe one way to lure them in into creating like intros would be create a framework, but basically use them to GL in a, in a EXZ file. Mm -hmm. And then we can package your stuff and add some music. Get the musicians to package your whole intro. There are some really nice small stuff. frameworks in the demo scene that you can mm -hmm. do that. I remember the combo filler, for example. The idea was to have like a shader toy uh, effect there and a the music from Crinkler and uh, from Crinkler, from. from uh, uh, one is Oidos for Clank, yeah, the music from For Clank, and it would just crinkle the, the stuff together and give you a 4K. But actually, the menu was really, <laughs> you try to, make, it sounds like it's just plug and play, but when you actually try to use it, it has so many small things that you can select and then select that you kind of get a bit lost there. You kind of need some guide uh, into things. But yeah, we, we 
we the demo scene should try to to you know get as many newcomers as possible and and it's i think it's interesting for the other scenes as well if we expose them a little bit more to to the demo scene as well so anyone that has any ideas on how to do these kind of outreach efforts i think that would be a very very good thing uh, to happen uh pestis any thoughts on this uh, topic yeah i actually after tiny code christmas um my twitter feed decided that i probably would like this january they would have like a january of uh generative art uh, i started following that 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 scene a, a bit and it was interesting to see, I, I started realizing that probably some of the traditions that we have in demo scene, for example, the tradition of organizing compos and submitting, like uh, competing for points, uh, might be a bit alien to those communities. But then again, then I also realized that something that they do sort of habitually, like like posting stuff on Twitter. So the, the peer review is, 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 is through this kind of a, a social, through social media, that is also bit absent on the demo scene i mean we do have demo zoo and a poet but demo zoo doesn't have very well i mean they're very very tiny communities compared to like these social medias that people mm -hmm. heard. so maybe there could be maybe we could try like something like a i don't know tick 80 but it has to be looping so that you can make a gif out of it and <laughs> and we start posting tick 80 stuff on on twitter see how it goes i don't know we could try that the demo of the day i think there were some accounts that try to do like a demo every day on on twitter but now twitter also feels a bit dead because of uh, all the elon musk <laughs> stuff so now everybody seems to be mo moving okay to but well, whatever there, there's plenty of alternatives to twitter the point was like uh i think yeah, that yeah. the trying to trying to reach more audience through the the social media platforms in a way that could garner some attention because i think that also um, one of the problem of demos, at least certain types of even tick 80 cards or, or Pico 8 cards or whatever, is that you have to download something and run it. And it's a bit of a hassle. I mean, I might be on a mobile. Tick 80 yeah. doesn't run so great on mobile. And, and so, so, so finding solutions to that kind of pretty mundane problems could be the key. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got some great feedback from uh, a couple of 1K intros that I did. And uh, some people made a video recording that was about two minutes. Uh, and that was allowed to post a video on Twitter. And the feedback was just insane, like compared to the feedback I got on Twitter. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I really agree with the uh, test is, uh, but we, Interesting. Let's try to explore a bit we, more. We, we, uh, let's move on because we only have about 60, 90 minutes uh, for this opening show. So let's go through the events that are going to happen. Uh, Still today, on Friday, we uh, well, we are on the opening show now, obviously. Uh, we will have the Nano Awards uh, coming up next, and I will talk about them in a little bit, in a little while. Then we'll have a, a ByCham uh, happening, and at uh, midnight, uh, the, the night program. All of these hours are CET plus one, so uh, around the middle of Europe, uh, Netherlands, German time zone, I believe. Um, a few things that I wanted to talk about with our guests. I guess uh, we'll talk about the the Byte Jam first. Um, any thoughts on this new format of the of the Byte Jam? It's not Byte Battles directly. It's more just uh, uh, free flowing. Uh, Pestis, I think you have uh, are involved in this somehow. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Byte Jam? Um, yeah, it's it's usually there's a bit more than just two. Comp I mean. In, in byte battles, we usually have two competitors, but in byte jam, there tends to be a little bit more programmers at the same time. And uh, we have, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a friendly coding event, but perhaps sometimes um, it allows you to explore something, uh, you know, throw ideas a bit, bit back and forth. So you might actually be inspired what you see either people programming and, and uh, you, they, you might take something from the other screens uh, if you're watching the stream at the same time to your own coding, or you might just do your own thing. And since you, there's no size limit, it's just a uh, um, also nice way to learn and see how different coders approach their effects. And as you see them build it up in this kind of a friendly atmosphere, you can sort of a little bit pick apart what is the process that they approach their, 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 uh, their uh, effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Poi, did you ever participate on any of these live coding by champ stuff? What do you what do you think about them? 
<clears throat> no, I, I never enter. And uh, uh, well, I, I never played with uh, TKT, and I believe they are all TKT so far. Uh, you are Pico yeah, 8 really hardcore. You, you stick with Pico 8. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. If, uh, because, uh, yeah, TKT is so powerful. That, uh, yeah. So, so uh, Super, Rogue, Super Rogue and Outroid haven't managed to convince you to participate in Byte Champs, or you, you just haven't had the time to, to, to do it? Um, I, I need to practice a bit with TKT before I go there. But uh, I'm super interested. Uh, that looks really fun. And... Uh, the, the by jam uh, format, where, like it's really friendly. There's no no pressure really. It seems really fun. And uh, okay. yeah, as you said, it's just like if you watch your stream also to see what the others are doing at the same time. It's, it sounds so fun. Yeah, yeah. And then on Saturday uh, we will start tomorrow. We will start the the show around 10 a.m. with uh, some morning relaxation. At 10:30 we will have uh, a video that I prepared with some help from Super Rogue uh, with the called a year in size coding. Uh, the part one will go through all of the size coding entries that were more prolific highlighted from the year, and we'll have a little show uh, presenting all of them and talking about them. And at 11, we will have a seminar, uh, size coding with processing, uh, given by Super Rogue. So if you are a part of the processing uh, creative coding community and want to learn more about size coding in particular, it's a really cool uh, seminar to check out. Um, at midday, we will have an out of compo showcase. Um, so anything that didn't fit the compos of Love Byte will be shown at this time slot. And also the 8-bit eight, uh, eight uh, intro showcase will also uh, take place uh, at this time slot. At 1 p.m. we will have the Byte Battle Extravaganza. Uh, at uh, 2 we will have the Byte Beat Music Competition, which is executable music fitting uh, 256 uh, characters. Uh, at 3 p.m. we will have Ask Us Anything, a video where uh, different size coding people have been asked questions and they will give the answers. Very interesting series of videos. We had them last year as well, and they were very interesting. At 4, we will have the Byte Battle Extravaganza again. Uh, at uh, 5 p.m., we will have the Tiny Executable Graphics, uh, old school and high end. Um, then at 6, we will have DJ Set by Alicef. At seven, we will have the the main uh, compo block, 32 byte intro competition. Uh, at eight, the 64 byte intro competition. At nine, the 128 byte intro competition. Uh, for all the different categories that exist, uh, old school, high end, and uh, fantasy console. At ten, the 512 byte uh, intro competition, and then at eleven, a DJ set by Syntex Error Stockholm uh, being live streamed from uh, Sweden. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Stockholm is in Sweden, so I assume they are from Sweden. Uh, and then at midnight, we will have the live program. This is for Saturday. And then we have the the program for Sunday, which also starts around ten morning relaxation. At ten thirty, we have the second part of the year in size coding, uh, going from the second part of the year. At eleven, we have a seminar uh, about music in tiny intros, given by uh, our guest here, Bestus. So uh, I hope it will be interesting. Uh, at uh, I guess we will talk about the um, the crackle tracker that you've been working on. Um, it will be, it'll get mentioned, yes, but uh, um, I mostly I'm talking a bit more generally um, the ideas that trying okay. to put some of the ideas into a seminar format that I've had over the years. And actually, <laughs> there is a slide uh, called P01 trick. So P01 is involved in one way <laughs> or another. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh uh yeah. next up we will have at midday the 16 byte intro competitions um at one the byte battle extravaganza again we have multiple parts of byte battle extravaganza at 2 p.m on sunday we'll have the nano game competitions 256 byte make a game out of it uh at three ask us anything uh part two um then the intro shows uh, at uh, 4 p.m at 5 p.m., the tiny CGA pixel graphics competition. Uh, this year, we have specific CGA palette uh, for the tiny pixel graphics, so that's going to be interesting to check out. At 6, we have a DJ set with my homies Go to 80 and Zden of Satori. Really cool. 
at 7 we will have the 1k intro competition uh, and at 8 the bike battle extravaganza yet again the final form of the bike battle extravaganza at 9 the highlight of the party should be the 256 byte intro competition all the categories uh, once again old school high-end and fantasy console and then at 11 30 uh, the results show um and then at midnight we'll have a dj set by lynn to wrap up the event so um okay what about the the compos themselves is there anything in particular that you are looking forward uh what about the entry let's start with that have you guys been doing any entries uh by the time we are recording this before it's not live so maybe there are still some entries that are maybe going to happen so uh what are the compos that you're looking forward the most because you have something for them uh point i guess i'll start with you yeah uh I met some pretty great entries. <laughs> uh, it's actually the first time I've met pretty great entries for them or, or for them or event. Uh, so yeah, I've got some some things. Uh, yeah, the, like uh, in the very small to two fifty six bytes. Uh, so we'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see what uh, what others have. Yeah, have managed to okay. squeeze. Uh, Bestus, what about you? What are what are your highlights that you're looking forward at uh, in terms looking of looking forward? Looking forward or, or, or compost where I submitted something? Well, both, <laughs> both. Um, I think I did something pretty decent for the bite beat compo. Um, the rest, rest of the stuff I've submitted so far is, uh, it's a bit meh, but, <laughs> okay. but the bite beat, I think it's okay. Uh, but actually I, I, I really love the, uh, 128 byte, uh, uh, high, high end order dot, dot, dot stuff. Um, somehow I feel that that is keeps the focus, not, at least on DOS, that keeps the focus on just on the, you know, make a killer effect. With 256 bytes, you you start to generally add more and more stuff and, and they tend to make, go ma many different ways. But in 128, it's, it's usually like one killer effect. 64 bytes is a bit too limited for that. I mean, you can't do everything you would want in a 64 byte, but in 128, I, I feel that it's, it's kind of like the sweet spot, sweet mm. spot for that. So that okay. that that is for the technical like mastery. I, that's that's the combo I really love. And this year we have the one kilobyte uh, as well, which is you know it has existed in the demo scene for a very long time. But Love Byte kind of felt like it was uh, 512 bytes already way too much space, and 1K whoa it's like way too much space. So do you think we'll have some interesting uh, entries on the 1K compo this year? What are what are your predictions? I mean, Poi, I know you're a lover of the 1K format because you always do something for for uh, assembly JavaScript uh, 1K stuff. So uh, I guess you like the 1K format in particular. <laughs> yes. Were you were you expecting to see it at Love Byte though? Uh, no, I, I yeah, that's a that's a nice surprise. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't get time to to prepare something. Um, fortunately. But like having across all these platforms, that's gonna be that's gonna be wide. <laughs> Like having fantasy console against those against uh, well high end uh, windows and JavaScript, it's going to be so so different. Right? It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a bit hard to compare the different platforms, but I'm I'm interested in it. Pastas, what about you? Are you looking forward to the one K? Yeah, I think that the one uh, K is really interesting because you you start to see these other platforms like JavaScript and Windows having a shot at the at, at, at the you know because it's 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 we, with all the headers and with the overhead for example even in javascript if you want to go the compression route get compressed code there's the bootstrapping takes quite a lot of bytes still uh compared to tk80 where you basically get it for free and um and and but 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 the payoff is of course huge because now you you have all the all the power of uh of the browsers and then in Windows and JavaScript, you can access the, the get an OpenGL and shaders running and something. So it actually might be that 1K might be the, about the spot where, oh, oh and, and with JavaScript, you have, then you have the canvas and everything. I think P, P01, you've done done most of the stuff with, with <laughs> just on a canvas, right? So uh, so I, I, yeah. I think that the, uh, 
uh, then then you start to see it's it's interesting to see which one really pays off in 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 the one case size. So if we see these uh, fantasy consoles uh, going going up these uh, uh, windows and JavaScript, and then of course DOS never write off DOS. DOS can do there's insane amount of x86 that you can fit in 1k or even compressed but then you might start to see that it's it's kind of limited compared to having someone running shaders and all that um in terms of the graphics that you can get out of it but let's I'm see cu i'm curious if you'll have any micro w8 on the 1k because it's like they have web assembly power all of that and we've seen a lot of very interesting uh releases but it's still relatively new not many people picking up on that so i'm very curious if you'll see a 1k on the micro w8 itself that seems like a lot of code for micro w8 <laughs> have you ever yeah. taken a, a look at micro w8 it, it's, it's it's a really interesting platform yeah, yeah I, very high level look. but uh, yeah yeah i'm curious about it um the other question that I have here to ask was about the 256 byte executable graphics, like making a static image with 256 uh, bytes. I've been trying some of these and I mostly just end up with ideas to do like optic illusions sort of thing. And I always wonder how do you get like a good idea to, to you know, to do an executable graphics? Have you, have you guys considered participating on this competition? What do you can you imagine what sort of entries we'll have this year? As this well, year first, there there might be something from me. Ah, <laughs> don't confirm nor deny. <laughs> it might have clouds and mountains yeah. and ducks. But uh, but no, it, it's it's uh, it was more of a just yeah, it was more of an experiment. Like I wanted to see to get a little bit of a feeling of the what it was. And and I agree. I think that the. Um, hmm, it, it it it's it's certainly i i i, I couldn't i i just could i didn't know where to do it go go with it i mean i think that they there it was more it was more like a like a start with a blank paper and what should i draw in it i mean on a demo i know i should make things i should make music i should make stuff flash with the music and there it was like huh what do I draw here? What am I supposed to put put on the paper and and it was completely random and chaotic so clearly I realized that it takes some kind of other kind of a skill set that I, I I I still am not very proficient at. Yeah, so I, I think you need it's, to start it's more like an art. I should think of, think of it like an artist. What I what what do I want to put on the blank paper there? Yeah, I think you have to start with the concept first, uh, taking from the 4K executable graphics that we have seen flourish in the demo scene for for half a decade now. Um, I think it, the the winner ones always end up being like concept first and then try to find a way to execute it with the techniques. But on the 4K executable, you always have like a lot of rendering technique going in there. And it's always about, you know, shadows and lighting and, and uh, position and making things that with math that feels a bit realistic. But in so much small space, you don't really have that much depth to go into you know lighting conditions and that kind of stuff you quickly run out of space if you want to do anything remotely realistic so i think it's more about the concept so i, I really struggled with that so so i don't know Poi, do you have any thoughts on on this category i'm like you it seems so hard <laughs> like uh, like you said this is uh, like we were demo and i know where to go excuse me more graphics i'm lost <laughs> Okay, so let's see what we have uh, on the compost. That's uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, another question that I have here lined up uh, from Super Rogue: Expecting anything wild in the out of compo showcase? Do you, have you guys heard any rumors of anything that is going to be released on the out of showcase? Nothing. No one. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Uh, I. I, I'm expecting like something either for weird platforms or, you know, something that doesn't fit like a game that's like 512 bytes, doesn't fit the 256 bytes, so it's going to end up there. So I, I imagine it's going to be a lot of those kind of productions that don't really fit anywhere. But I mean, I'm we have so many different um, categories of sizes and all of them are open for you know old school or high-end even fantasy console sometimes has a dedicated competition but in most of the 
uh, categories. It's, it's just bundled with the high end, so you can submit fantasy console stuff in any size range. So it should be interesting to see what, what will uh, be presented as out of combat. I expect mm -hmm. some stuff like more like games and, and invitations for something. I'm, I'm curious if the FPGA uh guys have come up with something for the for the out of compo showcase because uh there's a somewhat active also fpga size coding scene but there is the number of uh, uh operations or gates or uh that is counted and not the size of the original source code and uh, um of course it, then it's it's a bit weird then they have to explain how does this <laughs> qualify as a size coding but it will be interesting if they have something there yeah that would be really interesting Point, I'm any... hoping to see some. Yeah, I'm hoping to see some tools. Uh, ah, like, yeah, uh, tools to help size coding. Uh, you are very maybe connected with. The, the, hacker, you, hacker. you are very connected with the JS1K uh, event as well, and there were always always some stuff in there like uh, the vocoder that you did or some self compressing stuff. So I, I I'm guessing you're talking about similar things like that, like stuff that helps size coding overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, really what I have in mind. Uh, like there's some new packers or trackers or uh, ways to or libraries to compress graphics maybe mm -hmm. okay interesting let's see um uh, which event are you looking forward to is there anything in particular a uh, seminar or dj set or a by um anything in particular that you are most uh, looking forward to Bestis? Well, um, I think that the it last last year the the Ask Us Anything uh, roundtable was surprisingly uh, nice to to watch. I actually answered some of these questions this year to myself, but uh, it'll be also interesting to see what others have answered these questions uh, this year because I, I I remember that that was where we saw biggest uh, like. Uh, variety of all these different styles from different coders and, and and people there was really big differences in some of these answers how people approach size coding and it was really fascinating mm -hmm. boy what about you uh well since it's first time i i enter with a fantasy console i'm really curious about the, these competitions and uh, yeah, yeah it's it's so fun uh great katie has so much fun to work with uh, but i'm curious about that but um I'm, I'm mostly like a technical and visual uh, coder. Like uh, the sound is often an afterthought in my interest. So I'm looking forward to best this seminar to, <laughs> to yeah, get better. You usually just outsource the format. <laughs> yeah, uh, that works. <laughs> if it works. Uh, so moving on to other stuff, we also have the Byte Athlon happening uh, at uh, Love Byte here, which is a special award if you have um, for four connected size categories between 16 and 1,034 bytes. It sounds confusing, but it's not. We have all of these different categories, and if you submit uh, at four of these categories, they are connected. So 64 bytes, 128, 256, 512, uh, for example. Uh, you are entitled to participate at the Bytathlon. And uh, what what Bytathlon does was it will take your highest placed entry from each one of these uh, different uh, compos and it will see how highest you are and compare against anyone else who also made you know multiple entries for multiple categories and see who will win. Um, so uh, in 2021, Ilmanit won the old school by Tatlon, uh, Rjola won the high end, and uh, on 2022, Ilmanit won the old school uh, competition, uh, the old school by Tatlon again, and Helmut won the high end. So uh, I, I have heard that Ilmanit is not submitting as many entries this year. So uh, I guess the old school by Tatlon is up for grabs if anyone is interested in uh, in trying to get those so uh should be interesting is this uh, have you guys ever considered doing a byte i actually tried this year but it would do it with fantasy consoles i started doing 64 byte 128 byte and then i started getting to the hard stuff and then i gave up 
<laughs> I did a 1K instead. And I, I'm, I'm missing the connecting points uh, to do stuff. But uh, have you guys considered doing the Bitathlon Pestis? I did it last year, not this year, but last year I, I, I did it. Uh, mainly because I actually was working on, on, on first in a 256 byte. And then I realized that I can do probably the same thing in 128 bytes. And then I realized I can probably do the same thing in 64 bytes. And so I submitted the same production pretty much. Well, not, you know, a bit changed. I mean, it's stripped down version of the same stuff in every combo going start. So 32 bytes, I had to come up with something completely different. Uh, but <laughs> but basically, that was how I did it. But uh, uh, that was probably not the, uh, obviously was not the winning way to do it. <laughs> People caught on. Hey, I already seen this effect. This is the same metaballs effect that happened on the other. Uh, boy, what about you? Did you consider doing uh, anything for the Batatlon? I mean, uh, yo, okay, Fantasy Console yeah. trying to trying to grab the first Fantasy Console Batatlon. Okay, some heavy competition. Uh, do you expect any other uh, high competition? Is there any? Anyone in particular that you're fearing from participating in the Bitathlon to to take it from you? Well, well, well obviously <laughs> Helmut. <laughs> <laughs> he won here. And he's he's uh, yeah, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and Helmut polyphic. is the current goat <laughs> that everyone should yes. be afraid of. <laughs> um. Okay, let's move on to another part of the opening show because uh, it's already running late. Uh, statistics about the entries. Um, so every year we ask this question. I already know the the spoiler from from uh, from last year, but I'll I'll ask him again. But before we get to to that, I'm gonna go over some numbers. Uh, uh, we got over two hundred uh, entries received. Uh, which uh, broke the old Assembly 94 record of number of executable entries. Uh, I think we also already uh, broke it uh, last year. I, at, at the first love bite and at the second love bite, uh, we had already broken that. Um, we'll show statistics uh, first by divided by competition. And uh, this is the, the percentages that we have. Uh, almost a hundred, almost eleven percent of the entries are for the two hundred and fifty-six byte intro uh, for the fantasy console uh, in particular, which is really interesting. So a lot of uh, fantasy console submissions. Uh, almost uh, ten percent of uh, pixel graphics uh, submissions, which is goes in line with last year. We also had a lot of uh, small pixel graphics submissions. Uh, then the third most uh, submitted competition is the 256-byte intro competition for old school with 8%. And then the 128-byte intro competition for fantasy consoles again with uh, 7%. Um, very interesting uh, statistics in terms of... Um, I'm not surprised that fantasy console has that many things because it's very easy entry level but i was sort of expecting a little bit more other high-end productions like for ms dos because ms dos 256 bytes are so popular i was just expecting a bit more from them but it seems a lot of people are more like the old school categories of size coding seem to be brewing up a lot more on this last uh, couple of years which is really cool to see um any thoughts on this statistics does this surprise you in any way pastis not really. I mean, looking at probably this might be reflecting the popularity, for example, of Tiny Code Christmas. I mean, that probably alone uh, could be contributing a lot to these numbers for the for the fantasy console because that was the basically the main focus of the Tiny Code Christmas. So we'd mm -hmm. have a, now a huge number of new uh, comers making uh, fantasy console tiny size coding intros. And how how do you explain the old school uh, people also doing a lot of two hundred fifty six bytes? You don't. That's a good question, but maybe it's all everything's relative. Maybe maybe that's uh, everything's relative to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, you know like compared to x86. So it will be easy, e interesting to see what are the absolute number finally uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the combos. Yep. Uh, Poy, do you have anything to add to these numbers? Do they surprise you in any way? Uh, not so much because we um, the barrier to entry to write x86 uh, intros is so much higher than fantasy console. It's 
is so much yeah so much more work i think to, to make it cool 256 bytes or 128 bytes uh, in those and with a fantasy console where you just yeah write code press control up done it runs <laughs> but I, i'm surprised by the uh how many entries there are in 128 bytes for fantasy console because it's not so easy to have something nice in that size yeah yeah oh, I, oh I yeah maybe this is on ticket and pico it is done how <laughs> <laughs> You exclude the header, so uh, actually I think it's only for 64 bytes that you exclude the header. In 128, you count as packed. So, um, so yeah, interesting. Let's see what we have. Uh, another statistics that we have to show you are the division by size. So uh, the dominating category is still the 256 bytes. We had 28% of the entries being 256 bytes. Then the runner-up is 128 bytes with 16% of the entries. Uh, at uh, around 10%, we have 64 bytes and 16 bytes, and then 32 bytes uh, at around 8.5%, 1K, only 5%, 512 bytes around the same uh, as 1K, which is surprising to me. I was expecting more 512 bytes than uh, 1K, and then 8 bytes, only 3%, 3.5% uh, overall. So interesting statistics. Uh, it seems 256 bytes is still still the favorite uh, from everyone. I wonder if these statistics uh, include uh, executable graphics and the nano game, though, because those are, might skew things a bit because those are 256 bytes by default. Super Rogue is telling me no in my ear, so no. Um, so interesting. 256 bytes still the more interesting platform. Can you think of a reason why 256 byte is the sweet spot, Festus? Well, I guess that it's 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 uh, at this historically it, it offered you relative freedom compared to 128 bytes, so you didn't have to actually optimize so hard uh, to get get it, get something on screen in 256 byte. And on the, on the on the advanced level, it allowed you to, for example, add a little bit of a music and maybe you know work on some concepts. So it, it gives you some freedom to realize the idea. Whereas, in, as I said earlier, like 128 is that you usually have to just focus on one thing. That this is the effect that I I, I make on screen, or, or or maybe this is just just the music. So I make great music, but it's only black screen or something like that. So with 256 bytes, you can have a bit of everything. And also, it's two to the power of eight, so so I guess that that has to count for something. <laughs> uh, Poi, what about you? The, why do you think people focus so much on two hundred fifty six bytes? Uh, yeah, well, it's also I, I think it's the oldest category as well. Two hundred fifty six bytes have been around for I don't know a decade or two. Uh, so people are yeah, people know that category, um, and yeah, it, it's definitely more accessible than the lower categories. And then when you go to 512, it's like you, you feel lost, like oh, so many bytes. <laughs> I don't know mm -hmm. what to do with that. Yeah, I, I, I was expecting more higher end, like 512 and 1K, but well, interesting. Let's see. Let's see the quality of those entries. Anyways, moving on to the next segment of the show, let's talk about the Nano Awards. Uh, it's the as always, we uh, pick up all the different, <coughs> all the different. Uh, the size coding entries that were uh, submitted throughout the last year and we try to give out an award to highlight uh, the quality the award is this that you will see uh, on your screen right now this is what it looks like very uh, fancy award made in acrylic um and uh we will uh i will read the nominees uh, real quick um for the old school uh, category, we have Colorful Boxes uh, by Gunstick, 42 byte for the Atari ST. Uh, then we have Brave New World by Marky Design, uh, 256 byte for the Atari XE. Uh, Help Portugalized by uh, Forgent, uh, 512 bytes for the Commodore 64. Um, Merkwood by Ilmanit, uh, 256 bytes for the Atari. Uh, and then Dead Face uh, of Black Dahlia by uh, Dalton of Joker, 256 byte uh, executable graphics for the ZX Spectrum. These are the five nominees for the old school uh, category. Uh, 
Have you guys have any particular favorites? I, I, I'm, I, my, my hand is on Merkwood, uh, or my, my gold is on uh, Merkwood by Ilmanit, but I'm curious to see uh, what you guys think. Have, have you went through the list? Do you have any particular favorites for the old school uh, Nano Awards nominees? Point? Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder, should I say? Should I not say? I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I, I find it really hard because they are so different, each other, and also very yeah. different sizes, from 32 bytes to 512. Uh, it's, I find it super hard to work. Um, yeah, it's really but hard they're to all, compare. all very impressive. Yeah, I have to say that I was really happy to see Commodore 64 there. <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. There isn't that but, much size coding in Commodore 64, curiously no, enough. No, they haven't. But I was really happy to see Commodore 64 there. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, I think that the uh, they were they were all great and 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 curiously, this is what I said earlier is that I think that, that they perhaps like colorful boxes is the is the one that is like a you know, like a technical achievement kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, but bites. then the rest were really really pushing on the concept concept and uh, um, like technically perhaps not 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 that mind blowing stuff. Uh, but but really really amazing realization of these ideas on old school platforms, you know, which is which is for me it's always even a challenge to get a single pixel on screen. <laughs> yeah, and the barrier to entry is so much higher. Like you need to learn the assembler for that. You need to have a real machine. Uh, the whole development tool chain is a lot more complicated. So. Really cool. I've, I've been enjoying finding a lot of these things, mostly thanks to LoveBite, like getting to learn a lot more about these old... Uh, because it, when you are not coding for these platforms, it all feels like just, yes, yeah, another effect, whatever. You don't really appreciate the work that goes into it. And only when you start learning the assembler and knowing the tricks that are behind them and how impossible some of those things are and how hard it is to do, you know, basic mathematical uh, calculations on some of these platforms that you you start realizing the, all, all of the magic that goes behind the effects. Anyways, moving on, uh, let's talk about the high-end uh, nominees uh, that we have this year. The Dream We Used to See by Sense and Style, uh, 256 byte intro for DOS, uh, Alien Core 64 by Helmut, Shift Ride by Market Design, uh, DE6215 by Grofer, and Line Rider by Sebert of Root Kids. Um, I, 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 I'm very divided on this one. All of them are quite interesting for different reasons. I think aesthetically, the, the conceptually, the one that I like most is the, the dream we used to see by Sense Install. But uh, in terms of technical achievement, uh, maybe Alien Core will, 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 will get the vote. So I'm very curious on... on uh, what will be the results of this one? Poi, do you have a favorite for this category? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Line Rider is, is really interesting. The music was really cool in there. Uh, but uh, the the ambience in uh, the dream we used to see, Alien Core and Shift Ride is so, so strong. Like in such a small size, it's unbelievable what they managed to, to squeeze. Yeah, it's it's funny to see here that the high end apparently means DOS. <laughs> here. So it's if all of these are now not now, whereas in old school we saw a lot of uh, variety. Here we see it's only DOS. But uh, yeah, they're all very good. And uh, this DOS, it's, I think it's important to say this: this DOS is like modern DOS. Some of this wouldn't run in like a four eight six, or it would run but very very slow. So it's like a, the free DOS version or the modern DOS, like with modern CPU on top of it. Uh, some of these effects, others still work fine on on the on the old uh, DOS machines. So uh, the term DOS is a bit misleading because it's an operating system that you know bridges a lot of different uh, CPUs. Anyways, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the Fantasy Console uh, nominees. Uh, Thrive by Illuminate of Agenda. Micro Lair by Super Rogue of Market Design. Relaxation Exercise by Exotic Horn for the Micro W8. Uh, Pulsating Magic Orb by our past is here. And Second Dramatic uh, by Dresden Boy. So another very different uh, hard to judge because all of them are so different uh, competition my money is on thrive because i really like the um, 
not only did they build the tree, but he also had like different seasons of the tree. So he had a very good concept behind it. And it's 256 bytes, which for me, it felt like it, it needed to be 512 to, to do that. So, um, so yeah, I, I really enjoy that one. So my money is on that. Uh, Poi, what about you? Do you have a favorite? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going for besties <laughs> and the uh, precision magic uh, I, I think it's, uh, that's been through what has like, what is the most like a full fledged demo to me. Uh, it really has like some intro, like some many variations and the music gets more and more interesting. Yeah, that's the one that feels most like a, a big production. Mm -hmm. Pastus, what about you? What do you think about your co yeah, competitors? Well, first thing I should point out is that uh, we are, we are we 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 want justice for Pico Eight. Pico Eight is nowhere on these nominees, and there was also <laughs> great Pico Eight stuff from last year. So justice for Pico Eight. <laughs> I think that the it's very nice that the, the there's there's this variety. One thing I've uh, noticed is that Microweight is definitely making an entrance to the uh, fantasy console uh, because we have two nominees from Microweight and how do how many users does a Microweight has not not so many yet yeah. compared to TK80 for example so mm -hmm. so definitely there's something brewing in Microweight uh, because they can make so great stuff in so small size uh, so let's see where 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 Microweight will be within a few years. Yeah, I'm curious to see micro micro w8 uh, releases here at Lapa. You say micro weight, I say micro w8. I, I think you're probably right, and I'm the one who says it wrong. But uh, maybe it's I like think a may potato maybe potato that's the, thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's the joke. I, I I don't know. I don't know how it's I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. Anyways, before we move on to the next segment, you can still vote for the Nano Awards. It's still open until the end of this opening show. Go to woohoo.lovebite.party. Get a vote key through the, the social, either on the chat on Twitch or on Discord. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you could also email, but you probably don't have time to do that now. And remember to vote. And uh, whoever you decide deserves the narrow award will get them. Uh, let's move on to the next segment of the show, which is the Bite Battle Extravaganza. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, let's talk about Byte Battle Extravaganza. What is the Byte Battle Extravaganza? It's a series of Byte Battles, but with a new twist, so not quite like we had them last year. Uh, the Byte Battle Extravaganza will contain uh, the following matches. Um, we'll have a 128 byte uh, character battle, so you can only use 128 bytes. This is for the TIC-80. 15 minutes to do something in it, and we will have facing each other Alia versus Pestis here. Um, Pestis, I guess I have to ask you well, what do you think about this format? Uh, are you are you looking forward to to the matchup? Yeah, I actually um, it was actually interesting because uh, um, all everything I had previously practiced, I had been targeting the two hundred fifty six byte, and I had to throw so much of all the all the knowledge I I used when I I realized that I can't use any of that. Like custom palette there is probably out of the out of you know, out of reach and and all that. So, so yeah, it 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 it, it was a it was a nice addition because it's 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 sort of an open, completely new world because no, new new set of skills to learn because it's all has to fit in certain size budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, Poi, I guess you're looking forward to to this as well since it's so small size and so similar to Pico Pico Eight. Would you would you participate yeah. if this was uh, with yeah. the Pico Eight? Would you have participated in this? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay. just, yeah, it's really good. I, I'm not familiar with TK80 yet, uh, but uh, I just love light coding, and uh, these bike battles are, sound so much fun. And 128 is, is not a lot of fights. It's very hard. The other battle that we have is 512 bytes, so a lot more room. You can do all of the things that you want. Uh, you have you can have the tick, you can have border effects, you can put custom palettes, you can have the world music, <laughs> music. Oh, music but I think I'm music, gonna... music doesn't quite work. I think I don't. I, I I've, I've been trying to ask if it would be possible to have the music working so that it could get streamed, but then probably someone would troll havoc and then start playing some <laughs> some terrible noises uh, during the match, and and then it it could go so so badly. But we, it, hey, we it only sounds music. like a plus to me. 
<laughs> there was a new thing. We have FFT this year. We yeah. have been promised that we have FFT this year. And uh, that gives a little bit of a chance to synchronize uh, the, the effects to the, to the music. And if within 512 bytes, maybe we can start seeing something of a demo, you know, with the syncs and multi-parts mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, things flashing and moving to the beat. And uh, the field effects people have been organizing every Monday uh, a, a casual byte battle, uh, casual byte jam. I don't know the official name that they have, but every single Monday they've been organizing one and they've been using the FFT for quite a few weeks now. So we've been seeing some really interesting uh, things that you can do and it really opens up the live coding a bit more and the uh, interaction with the music itself. So it, it makes for a better show overall so really cool to see we'll have two by two battles in this format alia versus uh, orbital dk and toback versus gasman so really much looking forward for that then we have a theme swap competition which is a 256 byte uh, characters uh, battle and we will swap the keyword meta battle so they will be doing something aiming for the specific theme and then the theme will change and they will have to adapt uh, to another theme so this is gonna be interesting and uh, past this you're gonna you're gonna go up against gas man on this are you you're feeling up to, to the theme swap i mean this is pure torture i mean I, <laughs> no, this is this is the point i should probably confess that whenever i usually prepare for bite battles i try to you know make it as much as possible i try to you know we have the list of keywords the possible keywords in advance and i try to make a few quick drafts of different keywords if I have time. And then but you know, now with the, with, with, with the swap of keywords, <laughs> this basically means that you really have to live code it, the whole thing. And, and then there's, there. I mean, this is torture. I don't know, <laughs> next time you will ask me to, you know, code in dark and uh, <laughs> Go <closed>. blindfolded. <laughs> uh, blindfolded <laughs> or something like next year. I don't know, I don't know what go into the sa sauna and then jump to the freezing lake and then do a uh, 128 byte intro in five minutes or something like that. <laughs> it's going to be interesting we should do like rotating chairs like one person writes one line and then another person comes and he writes another line that could be interesting to do at at, uh, at events uh boy do you have any thoughts on these different uh, you know ways of doing battles which is your favorite which one is your favorite so far Um, the first one and the, the uh, theme swap seems, <laughs> yeah, <Okay. laughs> it's going to be entertaining. <laughs> Okay, so uh, then we will also have a closing uh, battle jam on Sunday evening. Four people battling at the same time. Alia, Metrotronic, Orbi and uh, Tobax. It's going to be interesting uh, as well. And yeah, I guess we're almost reaching the end of this uh, segment of the opening show. Uh, we're a little over one hour, so we we'll still have a little more... Uh, small time to talk about some some old stuff. Uh, which compos are you looking forward to the most? Uh, I already asked you uh, this uh, before. Um, so to, for me personally, I think the the I'm more looking forward for the fantasy console stuff because I'm more active there. So I'm I'm curious about the 512 byte and 1K uh, fantasy console stuff. Um, do do you guys wanna? talk a little bit more about any specific compo in particular uh, before we wrap things up uh, point any final uh, thoughts on yeah. your mind well i'm curious to, to see like how far like and how demo like uh, are people making tiny intros in fantasy console like are we gonna see some things like with some some direction in 256 bytes or or is it yeah still uh, in the in the realm of the 512 and also, I'm, since I'm more active on uh, Fantasy Console, at least for low pack, I'm curious to see how far people manage to push um, the Fantasy Console in total. Like, how many 32 bytes are we going to see? Are we going to see even 16 bytes for TK18, maybe? Uh, since 16, you yeah. don't have time. Like, you have the loop, and then you don't have, you can't do uh, a for loop in it to, to do anything. So I, I tried yeah. those, and it's really hard. I think 32 is. You can still do something lower yeah. than that on I, fantasy console i don't see it 
Yeah, I don't I, see it I being know. interesting, at least. I mean, you can always, yeah. you know, put random pixels on, on places, but that's just, you know, random glitch effect. Yeah, I know there will be some yeah, 32 bytes in Twitter. In Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, 64 bytes I, I tried, and it's possible to do something interesting. I'm curious to see what the people manage to do. Uh, Super Rogue is telling me in my year that we uh, we have quite a bit of old school 16 byte intros uh, this year for the old school platforms, which is really interesting. But uh, for old school, since you can use assembler, you can do a lot more interesting things than uh, for for fantasy consoles. In my humble opinion, uh, do you agree with this? Yeah. I guess best mm, is of I should, course. I should... Of course, and the instruction si size tends to be pretty small in old school computers so you might be but on the other on the other hand the instructions don't do very much so with x86 <laughs> you have you have a little bit bigger instructions but then then um uh, they, there's all sorts of weird instructions that do all sorts of stuff but um yeah let's see i mean i'm really interested in the old school stuff i mean this is a, old school has been always like a, the final frontier for me you know i i i i have a little bit fiddled around with c64 to understand what what what's it about but not 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 released anything ever but i'm actually very interested to see maybe this year is the thing that i i really pick apart the old school entries and start to look how it's really done and then to get understanding now i'm just for me it's just wonder you know i'm just like admiring the the end result but i really don't have a clue how how it's really done but i really want to do that and i guess that one of the best ways is really just download the bound down love bite entries and and pull out the disassembler and start picking for me i i started learning z80 assembler for the spectrum uh last year and i started based out of a love bite seminar actually given by by gaspan that i think super rogue also gave one <coughs> so that's a really interesting place to start as well and it was um yeah i've been it's been a rabbit hole and I'm not very comfortable with it yet, but I know I know I start to know the fundamentals and I start to know how hard it is to pull some stuff out off and how much you need to, you know, both know the platform and also invest a lot of time to build all the stepping stones that then you can reuse uh, for other stuff. And uh, I, I'm mostly aiming for the spectrum because it was my my first uh, my first computer. But I guess best is you're more for Commodore 64, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, on emulators, but my problem actually with old school computers has always been because I don't own any of those computers anymore. I did use, uh. used to own some of them, but I have I've got rid of them all when I was accidentally or sadly got rid of them when I was young. And uh, that means that it's, it's only emulator for me. And f when it's only emulator, then it's not a big difference. It's a fantasy console or it's an emulator. I mean, it's emulator is emulator. But if, if there would be an old school computer available somehow on the market that I could actually run these things on their actual computer, that will be maybe something. There is some like C64s, like rehashes, but it's, it seems to be actually still a, quite a bit of a trouble uh, to get one's hands on, on, on one. So, yeah, so and when you I, get I, one, you have to recap all the, <laughs> all the things because they're already <laughs> getting out of commission and got a new power supply and stuff. And there are some alternatives yeah. though, like some some, uh, but then it's not the original hardware anymore. Uh, Super was telling me on my ear that we have more Commodore sixty four entries as well this year in in size coding, which is really cool to see because Commodore sixty four is usually like just like a, a one file thing. Uh, they don't really care about you know size of the of the executable because it's already divided in in in, in segments, I guess. Um, and they finally start having more attention this year. So it's it's really interesting to, to see that. And a lot more compos, like basic compos, limiting the number of characters and lines that you can use and stuff like that. It's really interesting to witness that. Uh, Poi, a, a last question about you. What, what was your first computer? Have you gone back to the first computer and tried to do something with that? Uh, the first computer that I owned was an Amstrad, uh, the 6128. Uh, I'm like, I was too young to to know really how to use it, but now when I see the, the demos made on it, it seems like a really cool machine. Like the hardware is really interesting. Um, like in, in a sense, it reminds me of the Atari STE, where you can yeah, swap the, the memory address at, at every scan line. And you can do all, yeah, all kinds of weird stuff. 
uh, I, I would like to do something on Amstrad. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, so I think we're reaching the end. Uh, unless anyone has any final thoughts or questions or things they would like to add, uh, don't forget to vote for the Nano Awards because it's closing now. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's coming up next right after uh, this uh, opening show. Uh, we're going to show you who won the Nano Awards for the year of 2022. Um, so yeah, thank you, Poi. It was great having you. I should point that way. And uh, thank you, Pastis. Uh, ah, the other way. Oh my gosh, it's so confusing. Pastis, the other way <laughs> for for uh, for joining me on this opening show. I had a lot of fun. Thank you both for, for being here. Hope you had fun as well. Uh, thank you for your insights. Good luck on uh, whatever it is you're competing on during Love Bite. Uh, hope you have fun uh, on, the, on the stream as well. And yeah, any final thoughts, Poi, about Love Bite in general, about people watching? Any recommendation for anyone? I love it. I just love it. It's yeah, it's fun. It's competitions, but but it's all yeah, in good fun, like in good spirit. So don't just have fun, enjoy, try size cooking. Don't okay. don't worry about the results. Bestes, what about you? Any final words? I mean, this is a blasted advertisement, but uh, I have that seminar on Sunday. So watch it if you want to learn about music in tiny intros. I, I think I put quite quite a bit of time to to prepare to to teach teach you guys something and girls. So 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 please watch it if you want to learn more about music in tiny intros. Okay, fair enough. Okay, bye bye everybody. Enjoy the rest of Love Bite. Take care. Have bye a great, bye. Have a great evening. Bye.